My name is Sam Baknin and I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning. And today we're going to discuss shame. <laughs> shame on you? No, shame of others and the role of shame in politics. Bullies, thugs, criminals, terrorists and rogue bad actors, including rogue states, they're all cowards. Faced with resistance, they fall. Stand your ground, face them down, fight back, and their gun, tail between the legs. Except, except, and there is an exception. If you humiliate, shame, and mortify them in public, ostentatiously, to their face, in front of their acolytes, dependents, and constituencies, they're going to fight back. Then they are forced to escalate in order to restore their bruised reputation, wipe the disgrace, save face, and regain the deterrence and authority. Shame-based and reputation-based societies often compel their members to sacrifice their best interest in the pursuit of positioning, dignity, and respect. As I survey the increasingly more dystopian international scene, the role of shame and reputational costs in, polit in political and geopolitical decision-making is becoming more evident by the day. Let's start with Hezbollah and Iran. Hezbollah is unlikely to cease its attacks on Israel, even in the wake of a ceasefire in Gaza. The assassination of Fuad Shukur, Hezbollah's chief of staff in Beirut, has crossed a red line precisely because it exposed the incompetence and porousness of the boastful militia. Israel's growing panic faced with Iran's retribution for the humiliating killing of Hamas's Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran is an added incentive to up the military stakes. It is evident that Israel is defenseless in the face of Hezbollah's UAVs and precision missiles, let alone Iran's arsenal. The Arab world, Iran, as well as China and Russia, are shame-based societies. Dignity matters more than life itself. Deterrence consists of this very ostentatious suicidal preference. The West regards such calculus as irrational, but would do well to take it into account. It is the mindset typical of bullies, thugs, criminals, and terrorists. Consider Ukraine's invasion of Russia's Kursk region. It is bound to be repelled, but the public mortification incurred by Putin and Russia will push it to escalate the war in extremely dangerous ways, including possibly to target other countries in Europe and maybe to use tactical nuclear weapons. The same thinking applies to Iran. Haniyeh was an honored guest when the Israelis got him amid the inauguration of a new president there. Iran must restore its name and face in the region and among its proxies, regardless, regardless of the cost to itself. And now Trump. Trump and his base are also a reputation-based movement. Fear and contempt are the instruments of power, not love or solidarity. The recent decision by the Supreme Court of the United States regarding the immunity of the president, Trump actually, immunity when it comes to official acts, is reminiscent of the doctrine of papal infallibility regarding pronouncements ex cathedra. But the main benefit of the decision of the Supreme Court to Trump is to forestall reputational costs. Not standing trial or being pardoned like Nixon is a great way to avoid the disgrace inflicted on politicians when they stray from the straight and narrow. The Nuremberg trials and the ICC come to mind. 